Good morning, uh, everybody, and uh, thank you very much for attending this event and uh, allow the United Nations Joint Staff Pension Fund, along with the United Nations International Computing Center, to make a presentation today about blockchain, biometrics, and geolocation, the implementation of innovative technology at the United Nations Joint Staff Pension Fund. Uh, my name is Dino Delacho. I'm the Chief Information Officer of the United Nations Joint Staff Pension Fund. And uh, today I will be presenting um, this project along with my colleague, Shashak Ray, Chief Technology Officer of the United Nations International Computing Center. Um, the United Nations Joint Staff Pension Fund uh, is an international organization, a uh, part of the United Nations that uh, um, has 131,000 active participants and uh, approximately 80,000 retirees and beneficiary, and is composed of 25 member organizations with a market value of asset uh, as based on the last audited financial statement of $74 billion. Um, this is the uh, public announcement of our solution, which is called Digital Certificate of Entitlement, which was published on our intra internet website at the beginning of 2021 when we went live with this solution. So uh, very briefly, I'm going to walk you through the business problem that led to the development implementation of this solution. And then I will let my colleague, Sean Shankray, to speak a little bit more into details about the technical aspect of this solution. Fundamentally, what we had to address was a, a paper-based process, the ASIS process, which uh, require our 80,000 uh, retirees and beneficiaries located in 195 countries around the world once a year to sign a return, a paper-based form to attest, to certify, to confirm their, uh, that they were alive in order to ensure that the benefit the, the UN, UN pension fund on a regular basis. So it was an issue of demonstrating and confirming proof of existence by signing a paper-based form. What we did, we transformed this uh, paper-based process uh, into a digital process by uh, developing an application that uh, uh, our users, our beneficiary retirees can download on their smartphone and complete this process in a way where there is no um, additional uh, action or task required to be taken manually. So basically, in the past, we were receiving this paper form through mail post, and now instead we are receiving this uh, certification attestation through a digital application. So in terms of the challenges that uh, we had at the beginning when we tried to address uh, this process, we fundamentally identify four requirements, four challenges. One it was to prove the identity and to authenticate our users. The second one was to provide for a mechanism to confirm the proof of existence. Uh, the third one was the proof of transaction. And the fourth one was the proof of location because the location was also in an element that uh, with particular regard to specific um, benefit, it was a required element of the process. So uh, here we have uh, graphically depicted uh, the past with the future. So the current process, which is still available for those who don't want to take advantage of the digital version of the process, is to continue to uh, submit a paper-based form. On the right side, instead, you can appreciate the element of the new solution, which is based on a smartphone, on a mobile application, on the biometric mechanism, to recognize user through facial recognition and on the use of the blockchain platform to record in an immutable manner the transaction that are taking place during the process. In order also to provide ease of use, security, and trust. 
So just to uh, uh, make some reference to the fact that this uh, solution was developed in accordance also with the strategy of the United Nations Secretary General for the adoption of new technology, which ultimately are going are intended to support the uh, deployment and the implementation of the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. Furthermore, uh, we also, um, saw uh, the how critical was the uh, development implementation of this solution vis-a-vis -vis, if you will the history of automation of the United Nations itself uh, on the left side of the screen uh, you can see uh, we included the picture of the first mind frame that in 1965 was installed in the UN Secretary building of the headquarters in New York we put in the center the digital certificate of entitlement because in turn this application, the technology that will be illustrated in more detail by my colleague from the ICC, actually led to a new initiative for the creation of a United Nations digital identity to be used and applied to all the staff members of the whole entire UN system. So, uh, how and what we try to address with the digital C? Well, first and foremost, I think it would be important to make reference to how we decided, because as we know, definitely the blockchain is a revolutionary technology that uh, is being bringing benefit to many area of the, uh, if you will, activities and business and government uh, services. However, we are also aware that uh, definitely blockchain are not a solution to all problems. So here we just made reference to the um, World Economic Forum that uh, provided a decision tree on how to determine whether and how and when a blockchain indeed is a, a solution that could address a certain problem and in a better way than other. And so we just wanted to make reference also to our decision process, how we went about it. So first and foremost, the blockchain was used to provide proof of identity. As a characteristic of providing an immutable and independently auditable and traceable mechanism. Fundamentally, a triple entry distributed ledger. Second, we needed to provide proof of authentication, and we accomplished that by using facial recognition technology, which uh, we uh, design in a way that uh, this data will be stored only and exclusively on the um, device of the user in order for them to be authenticated and for that transaction, the creation of the biometric profile to be also recorded on the blockchain. And uh, in addition, we also took note of the fact that uh, in, for certain type of benefit, we also needed to capture the proof of location, and we accomplished that through the use of the global positioning system technology available in many other modern st uh, smartphones. We created a step-by-step -step process for our user, which is available on our internet, and they can download at any time. We also created a demo video which is available on YouTube for those who uh, are more interested in looking at the details. There is a, a complete demonstration of how the solution works. We receive some very important knowledge and recognition, first and foremost from Gartner, that published a case study on our solution, as well as from uh, an industry specialized publication, Investment and Pension Europe. We conduct the proof of concept and pilot project with specific objective and principle that are depicted on this chart, such as innovative and secure technology, provide reliable application, establish technical feasibility, and the pilot that was based on biometric information to reside only on the device of the user, adoption of secure technology, and also to implement the pilot to prove the viability of the solution. The pilot project was conducted in several countries, in 48 countries, and uh, basically the successful result led to the implementation into production in January of this year. Uh, we reference many international standards and best practices for security, many from the, uh, for example, the ITU, but also from the ISO standardization organization, control domain that we took from the uh, technical specification published, the ITU that we use for the cybersecurity assurance. Uh, 
as well as a con we conducted a, an identity privacy assurance vis-a-vis -vis the fact that uh, we store biometric information on the device of the user. So be, uh, I leave now the floor to my colleague, uh, Shan Shank Ray, Chief Technology Officer of UNICC, that we walk you through on the te technical aspect of the solution. Floor is yours, Shan Shank. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dino. Uh, and hopefully, technology is working and my slides can be seen. Yes, they can. So, a uh, very short and quick intro to ICC. Uh, we are a 50 year old organization. And as you saw in the picture that Dino had shared, you know, it, it all started with a mainframe, and ICC was actually created to uh, 50 years ago by the UN General Assembly, you know, the big tall building in New York, to actually operate this mainframe. Uh, just an administrative fact that we actually, all UNICC staff belongs to the World Health Organization. Uh, and as part of the UN family, obviously we are a not-for-profit uh, uh, cost recovery IT organization. Uh, here's a bunch of stuff we do. This is pretty much standard as any IT operations system integrator shop does. Our uniqueness is that we do operate the UN systems private cloud as well. So uh, in and, and that's important because of the fact that the UN enjoys certain privileges and immunities over the national laws. So this is an extrajudicial uh, private cloud that we operate. Right, now onto the technical solution. And as, as Dino was mentioning, the use of blockchain, the mobile app and, and the whole uh, shebang over there. Uh, from a user perspective, the way this works, and thus the, I can then talk about the underlying technology is uh, we expect the beneficiaries or the users of the pension fund to download an app from the App Store, Google or, or Apple. Once they download this app, they undergo an onboarding process where they provide certain information. They are uh, uh, given a uh, verif uh, verification code for us to ensure that they are really the beneficiaries of the pension fund. And then uh, they actually take what I would simply say, they try and take a selfie. So they hold the phone in front of their face and they take a picture. Now in that process of eight to 10 seconds is when we build their biometric profile of the user. Uh, and that profile, as Dino said, because of the principles laid by the fund for us, that it should not leave the mobile device of the user, it should be totally in user's control, is actually created and stored securely on the mobile phone itself. Once this uh, biometric profile is created, they actually submit in a proof of uh, a national ID and schedule a call with one of the pension funds call operators. Now this whole call operator business is something new which came in during the COVID deployment of this whole solution during the pandemic as we are deploying this solution out because clearly with all the restrictions in place, we did not want the beneficiaries the, who would obviously be 65 years or over in age to actually travel to a UN office for formal verification purposes. So we built in uh, within the mobile app itself a solution whereby they can have a video call with the funds call center and the funds call center, the operators can look at the pe uh, person they are talking to, look at this profile picture that's been taken, look at a government issued ID card that the beneficiary has scanned in and sort of matching all of these three things confirm and finish the onboarding process for the beneficiary. Uh, once this confirmation is done, uh, the next step is the actual issuance of this digital certificate of entitlement. And for that, what happens is the beneficiary again opens the app. They, the app actually creates a bio, or compares their biometric profile with the one that's already been verified and is stored on the app itself. Uh, upon the successful verification of the biometric profile, the app also uh, prompts the beneficiary or the person using the app to change their facial features. Now that is important because we wanted to ensure that, you know, nobody's holding a static photograph in front of the phone for just biometric verification. So we do a proof of liveness check as well. And that, as Dino had mentioned earlier, is one of the important things for fund because that is one of the factors based on which pensions are disimbursed to the beneficiaries. So we basically do a liveness check by asking the person to change their facial expressions, which are then again 
matched using the deep neural network algorithms sitting on the mobile phone itself within the mobile app itself and all that if that transaction is successful then all that information we send back to the back end if you see over here the point number two is to sort of uh, record in the blockchain that the beneficiary had successfully passed the biometric and the liveness check and in case of particular use case their location information as, as Dino mentioned Again, the location information is important for the fund because in certain cases, uh, the pension remuneration is dependent upon the local currency and, and sort of local currency adjustments are done by the pension fund to disimburse the pension. So that location is very important. So people are living in the location they promise to live in. From a tech stack point of view, uh, um, obviously, uh, we are speaking in the Hyperledger forum here. So we are using the Hyperledger set of technologies. The underlying blockchain is uh, Hyperledger Indie. And it's been an interesting journey for us for also from a tech point of view. So we started this project about a couple of years back, a tad bit more, I would say. And at that point in time, the shape of Indie versus what how Indie, Aries, and Ursa, the whole ecosystem looks like was very different. In fact, as Dino mentioned, when we did the um the business proof of concept it is from that point on actually aries was born as a project removing the whole wallet piece out of the underlying indie chain so we had to adopt uh, that whole technology change as well in flight so we are using indie today uh, the wallets as they stand are stored on our systems so they are what would typically a commercial provider call will call cloud wallets uh, and, and then we have sort of got the whole shebang of security to ensure that only authorized programs during uh, verification process can unlock these wallets and issue credentials. Uh, for the purpose of this uh, project, uh, we have uh, two sets of issuers, one from the fund side and one from ICC, to actually have the onboarding process and the DC issuance. Those are the credentials that we store in the wallet. Uh, we do not store, as I said, we do not have access to the biometric information. So obviously we have no way of storing it. The future plans do include uh, as we work on what is called the UN digital ID solution. Again, Dino alluded to in, in one of his slides, as we are looking to move this across the whole of UN as a decentralized ID solution for UN staff. Uh, the future plans are to then push the wallet into the mobile app of the user. Um, Right. I think I've, I've sort of covered. Yes, of course. Then then from a tech point of view, there is another important layer, which is we have built a whole uh, for lack of a better description, I would call it a middleware uh, between the underlying blockchain, the, the agents and the wallets business and the mobile app. And, and uh, that's basically a Django application that we have built, which covers all the workflows, the management of uh, for the fund. Uh, there's, there's some unique terms you see over here, the SPC secretary. So these are the people who work within different UN organizations and are responsible for helping uh, the people who are ret retiring from these organizations into moving into the pension fund. So, so we built a whole web application uh, solution for them to really from both as a beneficiary point of view, where you're interacting with a mobile app, and then also as a uh, fund administrator point of view to sort of really ease out and smooth out this whole blockchain business. Uh, so from, um, from a user perspective, this is totally transparent. They don't understand that this is all going in a chain, what transactions are recorded and how they are recorded. For them, it's, it's an app or for the administrator, it's a website uh, which has uh, uh, you know, administration features. Right, uh, as I've, I've walked through most of this, so I'll not spend time you know, going through this. As I said, the agents are sitting over here in the cloud layer with the wallets, uh, the mobile and the app for the fund representatives as well as the beneficiary and the whole decentralized ID layer using Hyperledger Indy uh, over here. As we speak, we've got roughly 9,000 beneficiaries around the globe who have already registered within the system and roughly 3,000 uh, successful DCs issued uh, since the launch and the general availability was roughly in, in February. So February, March, April, May, in four months, that's the kind of adoption. Um, technical challenges, apart from all of the, getting all of this technology working together, 
trying to adapt the solution in flight was the fact i would say the most challenging bit was to get the mobile app correct for anybody who is over 65 to use uh, and, uh, and and i think that was i think the most important or most complex bit for us to achieve but then again working with the funds communications team i think that was very well handled where we were able to pass on to the beneficiaries exactly how to use the application and how to sort of uh, go about getting their dcs digital certificate or entitlements uh, achieved um just as a uh, side note we are an associate icc is an associate member of hyperledger and the linux foundation so uh, we joined the foundation about three years back again as we started exploring the blockchain technology to be applied within various um, uh, social development sectors uh, as dino again alluded to uh, the technology is quite transformative. It can bring in a lot of changes in the in the social development sector. And as we look at sustainable development goals, we do all believe that the technology, the, uh, the decentralized uh, or uh, ledger technology, uh, distributed ledger technology or blockchain technology can play a really, really transformative role uh, in the whole process. Uh, I'll just pause here in case there are any questions, being cognizant of time as well. I don't see anything in my chat window yet. Uh, uh, otherwise, I can sort of talk a bit more on, on the technology side of, uh, um, of pieces. Again, as I said, the whole change for us when, when the Aries agent was introduced, the Aries piece was introduced was to change the solution, uh, to start looking at how wallets would interact with each other. And, and how the agents start interacting with each other. Uh, FII from a cloud agent point of view, we are using Akapai, uh, and, and that's the sort of the cloud uh, layer which is interacting between the agents. The In the initial rollout, uh, and again, the technology was not there at that point in time when we went live, uh, the whole edge wallet piece was quite immature. We've started working with the broader community on the edge wallet piece. We started, as I said, for the UN digital ID project, we're looking at it and also for the pension fund project. Now the edge wallet, we started working with the react native framework, which now, but now standardizing upon the Aries JavaScript framework, uh, and actively participating in the development of that for the community so that the edge wallets can be developed and we can actually try and push the wallets into the mobile phones. This itself will bring in its own set of challenges, especially we will we know we do know people will change phones, people will lose phones, and we have to figure out on, on how to manage those pieces. Uh, I do see a few questions, so maybe I can pause this and, and, and we can have a look at this. Right, so Jakub, the question is what technology software provider are you using for liveness verification? So very quickly, both the biometric piece and the liveness piece, because of the unique requirements to keep it one on the mobile phone itself, two, um, really to provide complete auditability to the pensioners and the fund that you know it does, as they say, it does what it says on the tin. Uh, we have developed a custom solution. Uh, so we've we've looked at uh, some deep neural network algorithms. Uh, which do liveness check. And based on these deep neural network algorithms, the team actually took those algorithms, uh, ran them through different training models, looked at the TensorFlow light outputs of those training models, and then wrapped them around our React Native uh, uh, framework. Um, we, we are getting these works audited uh, specifically because a lot of times with these um, I don't like the word AI, but AI models. Uh, bias is always a, a factor, especially based on the training data. Set. It seems that uh, Shanshai has some uh, problem with the with the audio. Uh, maybe if I can uh, try to address the question, I'm uh, answering uh, some of the question on the chat. The the question that I'm currently answering, the one from Oliver vis-a-vis -vis, uh, who are the parties who are part of the consortium hosting the nodes basically just to confirm that the nodes are hosted by the united nations international computing center so it's within the system also for us to ensure that uh, all our system are protected by the privileges and immunities of the united nation uh Shasha, i see that you're back online if you want to continue thank you 
Sure. Yeah. And yes. Yeah, so all it's 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 a permissioned chain that we're running currently within the UN ecosystem for just the UN uh, entities. Uh, so back to Jakub's questions on uh, liveness verification. Hopefully that answers that. Uh, do you have any protection against GPS spoofing? No, we particularly uh, we are using fairly what standard protections against GPS spoofing come in, which is you know looking at if you've got. Uh, uh, apps installed which allow you to fake gps locations etc i think i must clarify and and dino can jump in here as well from a business context point of view uh this is this was this was a topic we discussed quite in detail from a business context point of view there is a very limited uh, element of the beneficiaries who need i'm afraid that uh, my colleague has some uh connection issues i believe that uh, you probably cannot hear him uh, so if you uh, would like to continue i see that's 10 38 a.m i'm trying to address the question on uh, on the chat so if you would like to submit your question please do so i'll try to do my best to answer You know, and yeah, I apologize, but again, Jakub, hopefully, uh, at least in terms of answers, you've got the answers you were looking for. All right, I am still looking at the question and answers window. I do not see any further questions at the moment, and I can see Satish, the question you'd asked, Dino has already typed in his reply, so no, we're not looking at any um, sort of uh, crypto based. Uh, um, what do you call payments at the moment? Yeah, Dino, we can hear you. So there's one more question from Yakub about that the current mobile app is just a light client accessing the cloud wallet. Yes, uh, you're right. The Today, the, the mobile app, well, I, I will slightly shy away from calling it light because the app itself does quite a number of things. But in from a pure blockchain point of view, yes, uh, we are using cloud wallets and the app basically talks to the cloud wallets. Or I should say it actually talks to the back end and then the back end then talks to the, the wallets which are running in our data center. Right. Uh, any other questions? Do you store any biometric information in the cloud? No, we do not store any biometric information in the cloud. It is stored on the mobile app itself. It's encrypted using the HSM modules of the of the mobile itself. Uh, so it's not even an option. We don't we don't want to bring in this solution, we don't want to bring the biometric information back to the to our back ends. Right, um, Cliff, I think uh, we have reached the end of the time uh, and leave it in your hands to close this.